So this app I'm calling four clicks and I have a button and I've set the text of the button to be the number zero. And what I really want to have happen is after I've clicked this button four times, I'll no longer be able to click it again. Um, this is going to show us how we can keep track of the number of times something has happened, both using uh, uh, the, the button's text itself and then also using a variable. So I'm going to flip over to the blocks. Notice I only have screen one and button one. I'm flipping over to the blocks and we're going to start talking about when I click the button. When I click the button, I want to be able to change the text that displays on it to one more than it used to be. And the way I achieve that is one more means add. And what it used to be is button one's text. And one more is the number one. So one more than button one's text used to be. Where do I want to plug that? Because I can't plug this right in here. I have to plug it someplace. And well, looking at the at the screen, I want it to show up on the button. So the place I would put that is button one's text. So comparing these two pieces, this one is the setter, so I'm setting button one's text. And this one is the getter, I'm getting buttons one text. And the way you read this is set button one's text to button one's text plus one. So now when I click this button one, I have to open it in the emulator. So that's loaded. And when I click it, it now sets the button's text to one more than it used to be. And I can click this as many times as I want, and I can count all the way up. But what I really want this app to do by its name is to allow four clicks and four clicks only. So how can I make a button disabled? How can I make a button so that I cannot click it anymore? And if I look over here in button one's properties, one of the properties of button one is enabled. And if I just uncheck that, looking back in my emulator, when the screen redraws, that button is grayed out and I can't click it at all. So what I want to do is let the user click it until it reaches four. And once they have the, the value reach four, then it, the, the, it unchecks the enabled box. So it's going to go one, two, three, and then when it turns four, that enabled box should be which should be unchecked. So let's look at how to do that. We already know that we can talk about button one's text, and that's actually referring to the number of times that it has been clicked. So I can use a control statement over here and say if button one's text, and we want to check and see if buttons button one's text is four. And so checking to see if it's equal to something is a math. And I'm going to see if button one's text is equal to four. I never can get a four when I want one. There it is. If button one's text is equal to four, then we want to disable it. So how do we do that? Button one's, there it is, set button one enabled. So in the designer, it's a checkbox. And the way we do checkboxes in code is true or false. So true means it's checked, and false means it's not checked. So we can type F A L and find false on the keyboard, or you can come over to logic and find a false block. Either way, when you plug that thing in, now our app will behave the way we expect it to. And now, one, two, three, and then when I click it again, let's look at our blocks and have our blocks on the screen at the same time. When I click it again, Button one's text is currently three. When I click it, it's gonna say, take that three, add one to it, and put it back, making the button read four. And then it's gonna say, if the button reads four, then set button one to not enabled. There's our four, and now the button only goes up to four. So, what if I wanna do the same thing, except I don't want to have the number four visibly displayed on the button? Well, then I need some place other than the button's text to keep count. And that's where variables come in. Variables allow you to remember things and not display them on the screen. Like sometimes you have opinions of people or you have thoughts that you keep to yourself. Your app can do the same thing. So I'm gonna make this variable, I'm gonna call it clicks. And just like I set the, the button to zero when I started out, 
I can set the variable clicks to zero right there. Now, um, I'm going to change the buttons so that when it starts out, it'll say click me. And then instead of updating the buttons text to be the buttons text plus one, we want to set the number of clicks to the number of clicks plus one. I'm going to pull that whole stuff out and we're going to build it back again. So instead of saying button one dot text equal button text plus one, we want to talk about this variable. So we go to variables and then set, and we're going to set clicks equal to not button one's text plus one, but clicks plus one. And we can get clicks out of the variable drawer, and we use this getter, and we're going to get the value for clicks. So this used to say set button one's text to button one's text plus one. It now says set global clicks to global clicks plus one. And so we're keeping our number hidden away from the user. Now this if block says if button one's text equal four, we're no longer storing our count in button one's text, we're storing it in the click variable. So we use a getter and we say if clicks is equal to four, then set the button to false. So one more go at this and we'll see what happens. Click me, two, three, four. And after that fourth click, it becomes disabled. And that's all because we were keeping up with the number of times we clicked it using a variable. Variables are pretty easy. You can make as many of them as you want as long as they have different names. You plug in a value to start with here and then you would use your getter and your setter. And your getter lets you get any variable that you've made. Your setter lets you assign a value to any variable that you've made. And with these two things plus initializing it, which means setting it up for the first time, you can make as many variables as you want. Um, in an older version of App Inventor, there was a def block, DEF, which was short for define. That has been replaced by this initialize global. So if you see any def blocks in a previous one, just think about initialize global. If you have any questions about this, just ask them in the forum.